Hello there. Today I want to talk to you about the political versus the citizen, the citizen versus the man. This is one of the classic themes in classical political philosophy, the tension between the good man and the good citizen. We see this in classic philosophy with the case of Socrates. In fact, this is one of the, why the Apology is considered one of the critical texts in political philosophy. The Socrates Apology by Plato gives us uh, the examination of the philosopher and his relationship to the city. The Apology is a defense speech. And in fact, the, the, the basic thrust of Plato's Apology is designed uh, as kind of uh, where we only really get three parts. We get Socrates giving, we don't get the prosecution side. We get the prosecution side only in the degree that Socrates will, in the first part of his speech, cross-examine the accusers, the people leading the, prosecu the prosecution's case. The three people uh, 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 who lead the prosecution's case in this sense are the principal actors of this. And that's why it's always fun to talk about them, because they, uh, uh, um, uh, they play a, um, a key important characterization of what will happen in, in, in the play, in, in this drama, because it is a drama. Uh, Plato's apology is basically uh, Socrates' speech. Socrates' three speeches. The first speech is about uh, uh, his speech before the jury about the question of guilt or innocence. The second speech is his speech about what punishment he should get. And the third speech is his farewell, uh, uh, his, his, his farewell to the, after being told what the sentence will be, uh, him giving a kind of farewell and warning to the city. Um, and therefore the structure of this uh, apology is very straightforward in that regard. Um, and therefore, that's why it's kind of interesting in that sense. Um, we have uh, uh, the classic case of, um, well, the classic case of me not always paying attention to things, but uh, the classic case of uh, Socrates' accusers, the three of them, uh, uh, were very much political men. Uh, uh, Mit, Mit, Mitlinus, um, I always forget the names, I know, but Mitlinus is the one that was the most uh, important of it because he's the one who clearly has the political advantage. And the other two, you know, each one represents different things. One was the craftsman, the, the, uh, one was uh, 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 Mitlinus, uh, and the other two was a rhetorician and, and there was a poet. Uh, uh, um, uh, again, these were people who were tied to the uh, various factions that Socrates criticized. Socrates' whole, whole life was kind of, um, you know, he lived within the city of Athens. He did not, he saw himself as an Athenian. Uh, when the city asked him to go fight, he went and fight. He didn't conscientiously object. All good citizens. He got married because the, the Athenian law required that all men should marry. He could be pen, a, a, a citizen who refused to get married and have children was not being a good citizen. So therefore, he, he, uh, Socrates complied. He married. In fact, it's you know Socrates' famous marriage thing. Uh, he he picked the wife. His wife was picked. Uh, 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 he picked the most. You know, there's, there's a joke about this that Socrates decided that his wife was going to be the most cantankerous person possible, the most difficult, the most troublesome, most fiery person. Uh, not someone who could, you know, he, because why? Because this was his test for the city, that it, if he could manage her, he could manage the city. The fact that his, you know, the stories of his relationship with Xanthippe are so classic in that sense. They're kind of like the classic tale of, you know, in, in, a, in a culture where free women, women and citizens would never go out into the marketplace. They would send their slaves. Xanthippe would be come and grab Socrates to come back home. Uh, this was, you know, the classic kind of symbol that she, she, they were so poor, uh, uh, she was so poor that she couldn't afford a slave to do it, that she herself had to go grab Socrates to get him. When her, his, Socrates' children with her would be older, 
uh, uh, the children would come have to come and get him uh, uh, in the sense that this is how absurdist this relationship with Xanthippe was. But again, the question here is Socrates did marry, and Socrates had children. He fulfilled his obligation as a citizen. Socrates constantly fulfilled his obligation as a citizen in this sense. So even though he saw, but then at the same time he knew that what he's, his way of life, what is the philosopher? The philosopher concerns himself with the word of philosophy, philosophia, lover of wisdom. What is the philosopher? The, philo the philosopher seeks wisdom, sophia. It seeks truth in a sense. What is sophia? What is wisdom? Wisdom is knowledge about the whole. It's, um, Aristotle in his Nicomathian Ethics, book 6, speaks of uh, 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 Sophia as one of the five forms of uh, intellectual knowing, or the, the way we truth, the, uh, how, uh, 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 the way we understand the truth, the way we access the concept of tr truth. In other words, truth is the tool to discern what is true and what is false, what is valid and not valid. Therefore, reason, speech, is our means of truing and non-truing. Logos, which is both speech and also reasoning, is our instrument by which we validate what is valid, what is true, versus what is not. We discern it. it and truth is the dis disclosing of what is. Okay? Elithia. Elithia in the Greek means, lithi means forgetting. It's an unforgetting. It's, uh, this is why um, uh, Plato will make a point about this is recollection. Uh, um, and amesis, this idea that when we try to understand the phenomena, we come to, un we try to, re we, 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 we don't invent or make things. We, we, we only discover what's already in being. We, we, our, our reasoning discloses to us <coughs> the truth of nature, the truth of being in this sense, in the Platonic understanding of this sense. So therefore here, wisdom is about what? The wisdom is regarding the true things about the whole, the whole, the cosmos. Wisdom is about knowledge, about it, it, to be wise is to know, not just have an opinions. There's a difference between opinions, beliefs, doxa, the doxa, the beliefs we have of things. These are, uh, 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 we, we all have opinions, a uh, famous line. Um, opinions are like assholes and that everyone has one, right? That's the dirty little joke. But at the same time, how, how does opinions differ from assholes? Well, because not everyone has their own, okay? Opinions tend to be, we tend to have kind of opinions of our groups. You know, we tend to uh, often reflect the opinions of our peers and our friends. Most people, this is peer pressure, right? This is uh, groupthink, we say. We talk, uh, but all these things are natural element of our, our, of our social nature. So therefore, opinions are also the way we understand things. We, when we look at something, we, we start out, the, the, the level of knowledge starts out with beliefs about things, opinions, doxes. We then make a belief about something, and we think something is the case, and then we discover whether it is, it is or it is not. We test it. We test it. We, we find its validity or truthfulness. We truth it. So therefore, knowledge is the it, it is it is what has passed through this truing, either positively or negatively. We know this is so. It's not that we believe it to be so. We know it to be so. Now, wisdom is the knowing, a knowing about the whole. This is the classic understanding of wisdom. This is the whole, you know, it is the know about the cosmos, the whole. This is the, this is the highest form of, of, of reasoning. Now, Aristotle will also say there's a knowing, and, and this is about, and, and for here, this is about the things of theoria, what, what, what Aristotle and the Greeks call theoria. What is theoria? These are the things that are always so. In other words, these are things that are universally valid. This is things that are going to be, uh, it, it either is or is not. It, uh, uh, and if it is, it is, it, it is always is. In other words, it is that level of truth that is always and everywhere true or false. Now we have this ladder of truth, this ladder between what is always and everywhere and every time true and what is false, versus things that are true sometimes and true not times. 
true for this and not for that, conditional. In other words, um, and therefore this, therefore our, our we as human beings in the world live in a world where things come to be and pass away. We come, uh, we are born and we die. Things are not eternal in this sense. We, maybe things are eternal. Time, some things may be eternal. But some things come into being and some things pass away. Now for these things, this is, the, 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 the truth, there's a, there's a level of truth that deals with this. This is the level of praxis. This is what the Greek word praxis means. Praxis is this level of, con, the, the, uh, there is a truthing, there's a mechanism to know what is true and what is not true, what is valid, is not valid, what is right and wrong. This is returns this stuff. Therefore, therefore, praxis, which we normally call action, um, we translate as action. This, this is the, this is the world of living. This is the world of being in the world. This is being in the world. Um, whereas, theoria, this is the realm of ideas, the realm of the always. It's like you know, mathematical formulas. This is the, this is the level of the pure. This is the level where you do math. In that sense, you, 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 things are always the case. Whereas in the re, the, the, the existing world, we, there are think there's possibilities of things not working the way they do. Um, so therefore, that's the difference between theory. Theory where is at the level of where truth and falsehood is always. The things always are so or not so. And it's not going to be relative to condition, time, or place. This is truth at its highest and most peak form. And we have, th and, and, and Aristotle in his book six talks about three mechanisms of tr uh, uh, grasping the truth of certain things that theory are. Wisdom, Sophia, is the about it's, it is it is the highest. It deals with the understanding of the whole, uh, 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 the cosmos, the whole of things, everything. It's to know the natures of things in themselves, and not into things, but also the natures of the thing itself, being, existence. We would say this in modern philosophy is ontology, right? Um, uh, uh, the with ontology. Now, the, the next thing the Greeks have a term for, uh, which we often call science, uh, Greek science was episteme. Episteme, we, 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 we see episteme, we think epistemology comes from this. This is the knowledge of how do we know things. But episteme is not epistemology. Epistema, episteme in the Greek would be science, and this is basically the kind of science of logic. It is deduct. It is it is it is the reasoning through deductive, deductive deduction. It, it is it, it is the form of, of of how do we carry out and follow things from the, from patterns of deductive reasoning. It's the rules of logic. It's the rules of. Of, of, of validity based upon the principles of formal logic and logic. So episteme is merely the working out of the processes of this. Now, as we understand logic, logic requires, uh, deductions require axioms. The ax episteme doesn't deal with the axioms. Episteme just deals with the process from which the axioms are doing. There is a form of truth that deals with our ability to grasp first principles and axioms. This is in Greek called nous, N-O-U-S, nous. Nous deals with our ability to discern and know the truth about first principles, of axioms, and things like this. So there's a level of truth, that, that all these things, episteme, nous, and sophia, are for Aristotle in his ethics, in his account of this, a famous account, which gives a, it gives the first, comp real, a real, overall account of the, the, how, how the Greeks understood this um, gives us the level of truthing regarding uh, 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 per, uh, the level of theory of things at, uh, that are always so, the universals. This is today's science. This is how we understand science. Today's science is that kind of uh, uh, the studies of these valid the theoretical models uh, 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 scientific approaches always operate at the truth at the level of if it's valid, if something, you know, a hypothesis. If it's once it, it, once it fails a uh, claim, it is no longer valid, right? Uh, that's the theory of falsification, right? That 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 uh, uh, Popper uh, brings us. That in other words, we only know the truth of the scientific statements by their by by falsifying them. When they, we show that they're no longer valid, then we know that they're not valid. Uh, what we don't we can ever prove this uh, he argues you can never prove that they're true 
we can at best say that they're not yet shown false. Um, so therefore, um, um, our modern science um, is uh, 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 more has the conditions of doubt, and uh, and we, we uh, modern science assumes that it's possible that a theory can be shown false. Until it's shown false, it's considered true. The Greek world is that there's a le there's a possibility for us to get that. There is ability to achieve the truth, access and know the truth. But you say, but what about how is this at all relevant to apology? Well, then, again, Socrates' way of life is this element. Now, there's another way of life. There's the way of life of praxis. That is action, doing. And there's two types of action. There's, there's doing, doing as doing, and doing as making. The Greek word for making is poesis. And of doing as doing, uh, the way to do it right, one engages in phonesis, or the Greek Latin word would be prudence. In other words, prudence is our ability to know what is the right thing to do at the right moment in the right way to the right degree. Prudence or phonesis is our ability to discern what is the right course of action. The right. There is a right and a wrong way to act at every situation. Uh, there is a right course of action regarding the how to carry things out. The Greeks, this is virtue. virtue. Intellectual virtue is the ability to know what action is correct and what is action not correct. A prudent man is the man who exercises prudence. That is, that they, what is the prudence? This is the ability to know how to act, when to act. And, and he has the, and he will always, if he's, as long as he remains prudent, he will always act correctly. Virtue is the excellence of doing the thing correctly, perfectly. The metaphor I would like to give you about how to understand the Greek understanding of virtue, in this sense, is the athlete. Athletic, or the, 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 the superstar athlete playing the game. Uh, when, he is, when he is engaged in the act of playing the game, a star soccer player, a star basketball player, a football player, when they're, doing the, when they're playing at their peak performance, that is virtue. That is the, the closest, this is the closest representation of virtue in that activity. This is what virtue means. Virtue is our doing things, our acting, and, and, and acting in a way with accordance to what is right, the truth, and, and for that action at that moment, at that time, and at that place. Now, regarding making things, this is craftsman, techne. Techne means this is the virtue of craftsmanship. This is the ability of making things right, knowing how to make the make a thing right, doing it the right way, but having it to be done so it's done in the perfect way to do the thing you want it to do. Craftsmanship, artistry, craftsmanship. This is the concept of technique. This is now we get technology from this. This is the skills of crafts of doing this. This is the mechanics. These are the mechanics. These are things. So. What Socrates is concerned with is philosophies as highest truth, the high truth about the highest things. But then Socrates' great discovery um, was that first Socrates, if you, if you ever read uh, um, uh, uh, Aristophanes' Clouds, which is a mo an Aristophanes comic play making fun of Socrates. In fact, the reason why most people of his time had opinions about Socrates was because of the play. The play kind of was an attack on Socrates' philosophy as kind of a joke, not serious, something to be laughed at. So, um, Socrates, uh, in fact, in the Apology, he has to actually say this, you know, he, he addresses accuser, he has to go and address a, 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 a Aristophanes, because Aristophanes' play is what most people think of him. The accusations against him that he's a he doesn't believe in the gods. He believes in the thing higher and the lower, and he believes in the you know the, the idea of that false speech is stronger than good true speech. All of these accusations and things that Aristophanes makes of the character, and how he makes the teaching the stronger the the, the weaker argument the stronger, um, uh, uh, to his students is is um, this is the this is the Dog, the opinions or beliefs that 
uh, Aristophanes, through his play, gave to the people that people be, taking the lessons and symbols of it, believed Aristophanes' account and thought it to be true. This is the difference between received opinion versus science. Science is not received opinion. Science is what? Science and truth requires us, each one of us, to be able to validate it and do it. We don't simply believe it to be so because someone's told us so. That's authority. Re uh, arg arguments or evidence from authority should always necessarily be confirmed by either that checking the, the source out, checking what was said, checking the thing to make sure it was real. Is, is it true? Is it valid? Does it re do you get the same results or same facts as that person who said it was? If it doesn't, then you should trust your facts and not their facts. Because why? Because uh, the author authorities can be wrong. Opinion can be wrong. This is why, and, it, and, and this is the, it's interesting, the realm of the city is the realm of opinion. We, uh, we'll, we'll, someday I'll talk about this, about Plato's cave. F f uh, uh, but, but the idea of the realm of the city is the realm of opinion, beliefs. Um, and therefore, um, Socrates had to overcome these opinions about him. And that part of his defense and his defense, he is defending his way of life. He is defending philosophy as philosophy, as opposed to the claims of the city. And there's a tension between philosophy, because philosophy's goal is what? The truth. The city's goal is the welfare and good of the citizen. And what's good for the citizen may not be what is simply true. What is true may actually be detrimental to the good of the citizen. In fact, most cities, in most life, most of our political life and political world doesn't operate at the realm of what is tr simply true. It operates what's true at that time and place and in that circumstance and in that situation. Because what is con the, the conditional truths of our conditional environments have actual more impact than may be something, something more universally true, something higher true. Higher truth does motivate us, some people, and it was how, may all motivate uh, us to do act and to act a certain way, but we have to also understand the limits of this. So, that is a, 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 the element of that uh, question of there. So, therefore, we're now faced with this question of uh, what about the truth? That why did Socrates get accused by these people? Well, because he, as he says in the dialogue, he. He basically was told by, uh, he went the oracle, uh, Cleophon went to the oracle Delchi and asked the oracle Delphi, who is the wise, is Socrates the wisest? And the Delphic oracle being the troublemaker that the, uh, the oracle is, um, answered, none are wiser than he. Now, when, when Cleophon told Socrates this, Socrates said, this, you know, is the, clearly the, 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 he is joking, the god is joking, you know. Clearly, I'm not, I know that I'm not. So Socrates is all, the whole approach of Socrates is the understanding that he is not wise. He is, he knows that he does not know. This is a credit. This is the ground by which he knows. Therefore, this leads him, because he knows he knows he's not wise, he has to go find what wisdom is. He has to test wisdom. And how do you test wisdom? By testing its validity. The claims, look who claim they are wise and ask them that they're wise. Knowing that, he, therefore, what he gauges, and after hearing the oracle, he doesn't, he's, he goes and tests the oracle. He te this is an act of gross impiety at one level uh, because his concern with truth, he knows that, can, he knows that, he knows that, he, know, he knows that it cannot be true that I, he's the wisest. Now, but maybe. Because wisest is not, he has wisdom, but he is more wise than the others. It's the, it is the superlative of, of, of those who are, who may not be who are wise, but those who think they're wise. Um, the God, the God might have been playing that way too. So that, you know, that's the, that's, that's the play on words in the oracles. So therefore Socrates went on the test and Socrates went to test the, test all sorts of people. 
He tests the poets, the, the people, everyone who can representation, the, all the sophists that were who's to come, to, to, who sell their, who sell knowledge as a means of, uh, uh, you know, the Athenian life was such that because of public speaking, because every citizen ha had to deal with the, uh, go to the assembly, or could go to the assembly, or had to go in front of the courts to deal with lawsuits, again, which were again the citizens, all this, the courts were complied with. It's not like a court; we have a small jury. These were the daily assembly that was up there. That they would be public business, and then they would have the courts. And therefore, these the citizens would come and get paid. You know, the poor would get paid to go. So therefore, um, uh, you had this uh, this uh, the people who could speak well would win. So therefore, learning sophists and rhetorists, teachers of rhetoric, would teach people skills of how to get. If you're going to be successful in politics, you have to go in front of speaking of in front on the forum and speak to the uh, and try to persuade the the vote the citizens to vote for you and vote for your position. So therefore, forensic rhetoric, rhetoric, uh, uh, particularly rhetoric that aims at deliberation and trying to evoke emotions, celebrate uh, all the forms of rhetoric. Was uh, were, were scholars, sophists, and uh, things like that were constantly teaching these things to the people. That's why that's the, there's a whole industry of wise guys, sophists, wise guys who come and teach people how to, to be. If you're going to be, you want to be a, a successful person uh, and politically successful, you got to learn to speak and have knowledge of technical. So they, they, uh, therefore, there was this whole industry of sophists, both rhetoricians and also knowledge scholars. But there was also some of these sophists. Who, who like Parmenides and other people who were like, did concern with themselves with truth in a certain way, but also pra people concerned with practical truth, how to make this effective, how to, how to deal with this. Protagoras and uh, Parmenides and particularly Gorgias, the rhetoric rhetorician. Um, Socrates dealt with the, would, would would every time he could meet one of these people, he'd go to them and say, "You say you you know do you, do you know what justice is? Do you know what truth is? Tell me." What is just? What is the good? What is you? What is the? What do you claim you know? And then he discovers. I mean, he would go about testing these wise guys and discover no, they're not as wise as they think they are. Um, sometimes they claim uh, what they claim to know virtue, but they don't know virtue. He showed. He, yeah, this is very. You know, that's that's why his dialogues on, on things are very interesting in this regard, because he, this is the Socratic approach. He goes. He asks the question. They they define it, and then he ends up trying to undermine the, the Socratic approach. Is asking questions, get, and, and seeing whether they contradict a person contradicts them or not. And Socrates goes about this, uh, and. and uh, Pisses off every all the poets. That, you know, first he does the, he does the sophists, and he pisses them all off. And then what happens? Then the poets and the rhetor, uh, the rhetoricians and all these guys who are making money and and selling knowledge that is going to be good for. And he goes on. He you know he does this in the marketplace, he, or maybe to maybe someone's house or something. Mm -hmm. Plato gives us doesn't give us account of Xenophon in his account. We see Socrates at the marketplace, doing this. In, in, in particularly in the memorabilia, but in Plato's accounts, we always see them in private settings. He meets these people in, the, in, in, in their circles of friends, and he will, uh, uh, in, you know, question them on their claim of knowledge. And all, all of these examples, what happens is he shows that they don't really claim know what they claim they know. Therefore, these people hated them. Now. Um, it is mostly in Xenophon's account do we get pictures of people, him then going to the craftsmen. And in the Apology, he says, the craftsmen, the only people that he said, the craftsmen, at least they knew what they said, they had knowledge about their craft. But the problem with the craftsmen was that they believed their knowledge of the craft, their, 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 their wisdom or knowledge about the craft they engage in. They did that well. But they believed that their, their, their excellence at techne gave them a, a right to, to know about to, to opinion and, and give their, in other words, they were also experts on truth and experts at political things, knowledge. And he says, no, this is but this is this is the, the, when they started talking about politics and truth, they, that's where they went astray. They were as ignorant as every other man. And that's why he said that. He said that, and therefore he discovered that God was right; that He was the wisest because He was wise because He knew He wasn't wise. So the, in other words, this is the Socratic. The beginning of wisdom for Socrates is to know that you're not wise, and then uh, 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 self-awareness of that sense. 
This self-awareness and this aspect is very problematic for the political world because it forces you to constantly question. Truth, your concern is truth. And your truth will lead you to do things that may not be good for the city, in that sense. That may actually, that's what, in fact, Socrates, did perp, you know, Socrates said, it was only until this moment that Socrates really tried to avoid going public. Socrates, although a soldier, he was only one time a civic officer. That was he, 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 uh, the trial of the generals, where he was the, uh, uh, the, 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 author, the authorizing person recognizing the decision. And when the, 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 the decision to execute the generals for failing to bring back the dead, the jury didn't properly do the vote, he refused to ex uh, 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 re uh, recognize the vote. And by time the end of the time of his cycle, uh, uh, they, they were not able to condemn the generals. And then when his day was up, the next persons came. So as long as he was in charge, there was no injustice done. And that's, that, this account is reported in Xenophon's Hellenica on, uh, um, uh, about this. Now, the, uh, um, other, than that, other than the two times he went to battle, the two times he mentions what, uh, that he left Athens to go battle for Athens, one time he where he saved kind of uh, 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 Alcibiades. You know, Alcibiades supposedly will talk, recount this account, recount this tale. Um, Socrates's account of why he doesn't talk about this. Why doesn't he go for political life? Why doesn't he do these things? And his argument is, is because of his demonia. What is it? The demonia is this voice inside him which only tells him, don't do something. Don't. Doesn't say do something. It says don't, or it doesn't say it, it. It doesn't say it doesn't give you the warning of don't doing it. And what happened was he wasn't. Uh, uh, um, he uh, uh, usually in his life the, the mania toys taught him not to do it, but this time when he was discussed about whether to do this trial or not, because there, there was this trial could have been completely handled that it was killed immediately. Um, it would have been very easy to uh, have one, a friend of somebody go to the assembly and have this thrown out very quickly to the assembly. Um, by, you know, a, a friend of Socrates, a friend of somebody, one of Socrates' very uh, uh, older friends could have easily done something to get this thrown out um, and could have had this uh, uh, resolved. Socrates went and chose to defend himself. And because he chose to defend himself and did it, and then he also chose to defend himself in the way to agitate his his in both in both his defense of himself and in the uh, uh, try the speech about how he should be punished. Uh, there, you know, he he basically says uh, 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 punishment should only uh, punishment should make you better. Um, I've not done anything to harm the community. Um, my stuff helps the community. So therefore, um, you know, uh, you shouldn't do anything to make people worse. You, may, you should do things to make them better. So therefore, since I'm a poor person, maybe I should uh, get free meals at the, um, the, the place of honor that Olympic heroes and heroes of the city were honored by. Okay, Give them the highest award that the city give, gives a citizen who does a great service with the free meals at the, the uh, at, at, at the place that the, that he uh, the, the, at, at, I, can't, I forget the term of the word but the, 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 the palace that would have them for the, they would have that those dinners deal, is, give to people who've been Olympic heroes and to people who've done services to the city in the past that they have access to have the, the, the free meals for them uh, that, that this punishment should be that now that just I my punishment should be the greatest a a a award that the city bestows to its greatest benefactors. That was you know that was his, he got he got more death sentences than uh, be, than he got guilty votes okay because of that he just pissed everyone off off on that point. Um, and he got the guilty votes because he talked he, he just talked arrogantly about this I'm I know I'm clearly wise and. Uh, and I did this, and I, 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 I've always tried this. So, I mean, in many ways, it was, Xenophon says it was Socrates' big speaking. Um, That's the way he conducted himself at the, uh, 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 the trial that actually led to the jury committee. Again, that's true. Now, the reason why he said he did this is because the da daemon did not stop him. 
So for some reason, at this point, the daemon did not no longer stop him. In other words, it didn't say, Don't, maybe, maybe, Socrates, maybe you should not say this. Socrates, you shouldn't do this. The daemon let him do it. Now, now, of course, he's 70 years old. This is Maybe he's doing it because he wants to be Socrates. He wants to go out. Socrates wants to go out before he becomes non compass mentis. Because once Socrates becomes non compass mentis, is he Socrates anymore? No. He's no longer able to exercise this. He's at the peak of his mental points right now, and it might be going down. So this may be a good... Maybe letting the city kill you might be a good thing. Because why? Because everyone will remember it. And you will always be... Is death... It also gives him the opportunity to test the question. Is death really as bad as it is? Or is this, you know, is death, you know, is death, because he said, you know, he, this is the great question, what happens after death, this gives, gives him, he, he now gets to answer this question, or experience this question, in a sense. So, um, uh, and since he does not believe that death is a punishment or a pain, uh, he's going to test this, okay, to discover the truth about this. Um, and therefore, this does, you know, he, he is, he's engaging in the very ultimate question of philosophy by doing, accepting the punishment. Um, so therefore, the, the, this question of the man in the city, the, the good man in the good city, this is the question that is Socrates. Can, is the philosopher, what is the goal? What, the philosopher is aimed at the highest truth, the concern of truth. The concern of what is the truth, what is the wise, what is the good. This is the ultimate peak. The philosopher cares about that which is true always, everywhere, and absolutely. The good citizen cares only for what is good for the regime. The good citizen is the one who obeys the law. So therefore, the virtue of the citizen is always relative to the kind of regime you have. A good Nazi is not a good citizen in, in non-Nazi Germany. The good Nazi is a good Nazi. He is a good citizen of Nazi Germany. But the uh, a good uh, uh, a citizen of the Weimar is not a good Nazi. Vice versa, a good Nazi is not going to be a good citizen of the post in the post-war Germany. Why? Because the post-war repudiates the Nazi past in that sense. It, 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 it has it, its understanding of justice and its norms are, and what is what we expect, what, what a citizen is expected of, is that, tied to that, tied to that regime. So the, what, the virtue of the citizen is always tied to the particular political form or political regime in question. So a good citizen in one regime is not going to be a good citizen in the other regime. The good human being has a problem, therefore. The good human being is not necessarily going to be a good citizen in most regimes. The good human being might live a life that... Uh, the, the truly good human being is only a good citizen in the regime where there is no consensus... The, 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 what, is, what is just and right by law is not inconsistent with what is just and right by nature. In other words, what is simply just and right? That therefore there must be a complete agreement between what, what reason and nature says is just and right always and everywhere, and what is right in this particular in the regime. Most political regimes always fall short of justice. All this is why law and justice is not the same. Law is a regime's attempt to approximate achieve justice. It's, it's there. Actually, the, the laws are the authoritative opinions that the regime has about what justice is. And in this sense, we are confronted with a very complex problem. Now, we're at the uh, um, end of our time here. I think I've been long enough on this question. I hope it's been interesting to you. Um, um, please subscribe uh, uh, and uh, tell your friends about it, mate. Okay, take care. Bye.